Okay, in this tutorial we'll be discussing Spotlight Redact in Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get started. First you want to have a clip on your timeline that you want to apply the effect to. So I have that here. Next go to the Effects tab. If you don't have an Effects tab, go to Window and choose Effects. Then twirl down the Video Effects category. Then the Detective category. And within Detective you'll find Spotlight Redact. So you can either drag this onto your clip like so, and that applies the effect, or, let me undo that, you can also just double click, and that will apply Spotlight. And then you want to have the Effect Controls open, so if you don't have an Effect Controls tab, go to Window, choose Effect Controls, and then find the Spotlight Redact effect within this window. Now at this point I can actually click on the effect, and that will allow me to click and drag where I want to place it. So if I wanted to hide someone like this guy here, or I wanted to highlight him, either way, I just drag it and apply it that way. I can also resize it using the handles on the side so I can really pinpoint where I want to place this spotlight effect. So now that I've done that, we can talk about some of the effects over here. The first one is the background. So let's open that up, and you'll see there are a number of effects to choose from in here. We have Transparent, Blur, Mosaic, Scatter, and Emboss. Transparent just makes the background black. Blur, self-explanatory, blurs it. And each of these effects have an amount. So right now, by default, Blur is set to 100, but I can click on the slider and drag that up to make it even more blurry. Or, I can click on the number and drag left to right that way. Or, I can highlight the number, click on it, and type in what I want. So, like a 50, for example, and then push Enter, and now it's 50. Okay, if I want to undo all of that and place this back to the default, there is a Reset Parameter button right here. And that resets that particular parameter. If I want to reset the entire effect, I can do that by resetting all the parameters right here. And that puts it back to the default. Let me undo that. And we'll look at more of these effects. You have uh, Mosaic, Scatter, and Emboss. And then we can also do a None, and just change some of the Brightness, Contrast, Gamma, Saturation settings. So if you look at that, twirl this down, you have brightness of the background, contrast, gamma, saturation. Okay. And then mix is basically the opacity of this effect. So if I twirl this down, I can make this a little bit less opaque or more. So if you had like a if you had like a blur effect going. And let's reset these parameters. You can see that I can make this a little less blurry or more blurry by using the mix slider as well. And that's, that goes with the other effects as well. Okay. So those are the background effects. We must change this back to a blur. Put the mix back to 100. And we'll talk about the actual spotlight effect of itself. So as you can see, there are four you can choose from. By default, only one is enabled. But if you wanted to have up to four, just open these settings up and enable each one. OK. Now we have three. but. Uh, We'll just talk about one for now. Turn these off. All right, so let's look at the settings for Spotlight 1. And we'll just go down the line here. OK. So source is just position. So this is x and y coordinates. So if I drag this to the left, the, effect, the spotlight effect goes to the left. And to the right, goes to the right. And this is the. Uh, Y coordinate, so up and down. 
And that's the same thing as clicking and dragging. You can see. Okay. Let's put that back. Size is probably self-explanatory. It's the size of the actual spotlight itself. So if I drag this over, it makes it larger. That makes it smaller. Uh, same as before, you can click in here and drag that way. Or you can click and highlight the number and type in what you like. Like so. And that's the same as dragging the little handles on the corners. That's the same as the uh, size slider. Okay, and then you have aspect. That makes it into more of an oval shape versus a circle. All right. And we can undo that, put it back to a circle. Skew just skews the effect, like so. I can then rotate it if I like, as you can see. And then roundness is the roundness of the actual spotlight. So if you wanted the spotlight to be an actual square, just make this zero. And it's more of a square, in this case a diamond. We can change the skew. And then rotation. Makes, you a, makes a little diamond shape there. Okay. So those are the settings for the actual shape. And if we go down here to the border, you can see that currently it's set to an outline and the size is three. So if I wanted to make this size a little larger, I can drag this up and make it larger. I can also change the color. There's a color picker box you can open up and then just choose the color you like. You can also choose using the color picker here. You can choose from within the interface. If so I wanted to, a blue, I could do that. Click OK, and that applies the color. But let's change that to a red. OK. And now it's red. Now you can also change the opacity of the border. Right now it's obviously at 100, but if we want to make this less opaque, more transparent, you can go like that. And there you go. Let's put that back to 100. So that's how you would highlight somebody, but what if you want to redact them, you know, hide them? And that's what the effects here are for. So if I wanted to actually hide this person, I can choose an effect. So I could actually blur that person, and let's change the background on this effect so it's I'm not double blurring. So we'll change this background effect to none. And go back down here. And here's my blur. These are the same settings as the background, but now they're affecting the inside of the spotlight effect. So again, the amount. So how blurry do you want this? Pretty blurry. Brightness, contrast, gamma. All those settings are here. We could do a none and just make this brighter if you wanted to. Contrast, etc. Do a blur again, and then change the mix, which is the opacity of the effect. So you can just kind of play with that to your liking. Other effects, mosaic, scatter, and emboss. Okay. Now, if you want to keyframe the effect to follow something, follow an object, you can do that. Let's choose a new clip, which I have here, which is an airplane taking off, and we can Keyframe this using Spotlight. So let's do that. We'll apply Spotlight. You can see it's applied there, and we will reposition it so it's covering the airplane. And I'll change the border of the Spotlight so it's red so you can really see it. And we'll change the size of the border. And the size of the actual Spotlight itself. Okay, and we're going to want this spotlight to move and follow this plane. So how would you do that? Well, you have to use keyframes. And the way you do that, we're going to have this spotlight move. So we're going to use the shape keyframes, in this case, the source. 
So in Premiere, you need to create your first keyframe and then all keyframes after that are automatically generated as you make adjustments. So we'll make an initial keyframe here at the beginning by clicking this toggle animation button, which is actually a little stopwatch icon. So click on that and we'll go to the end of the clip and just click on the spotlight effect and move it up. Okay, and you can see here that we also need to keyframe the size. So we can actually go ahead and create a keyframe now for size. And we'll adjust that. Go back to the beginning and just readjust it this way. And that's automatically generated there. And now you can see that my keyframes are off. We'll adjust that in a second, but you can see that the size is going from small to large. Okay, so how do we fix this problem? Well, we have to add more keyframes. So let's go through and fix this. We'll go back to the source and we'll just go through this and readjust. Every time I move this, a keyframe is added. So we'll go down a little bit, move this, keyframe is added, go down, move this, keyframe is added, and so forth. And eventually we'll get to the point where this is actually following the plane a little, little bit better. If we play that, there you go. So most of the parameters in here are keyframeable. The only thing that's not is the changing the background type, you know, the effect type. Once you set this, you can't keyframe changing that, but you can keyframe the amount of these effects, if that makes sense. So let's do that. So let's change the amount of the background blur I just added. So we'll go back to the beginning and we will add a keyframe on the amount. And we'll start with no blurring. And then at the end, you can push end on the keyboard. Just change this amount to whatever you like. And now you'll see that from beginning to end, the background gets blurrier and blurrier. Okay. So those parameters are all keyframeable. And I can do the same for the, the effect inside the spotlight if we want to add something like uh, brightness as we go. Same thing here, go to the beginning, add a keyframe, go to the end, and then change your brightness amount however you like. And you'll see that, let's change this one to like really dark. Okay, so you can really see. And you'll see as it goes, the inside of the spotlight gets brighter and brighter as it goes along. Okay. What about deleting keyframes? Well, keyframes can be deleted. We can do that as well. So any keyframe you want to delete, just click on it, highlight it, push delete on your keyboard, and it's gone. If you want to delete all the keyframes, click on the stopwatch, toggle animation, and Premiere will warn you you're going to delete all these keyframes and just say OK. So I'll click that. It's saying, hey, do you want to do this? I'm going to say, yes, that's fine. And all the keyframes are deleted. So those are the basics of using Spotlight Redact in Premiere Pro.